my family. I get the cheat code, I'm a beast. They should've never let me out of leash. Stop out the cap, I'm just tryna see. You really back what you talk on the beat. They put me in, I'ma walk on the beat. I eat my plate and it make me obese. I been pushing lyrics like a kingpin. And when the day we got no rest. Hey guys, what's going on? What's happening? I'm tired today. I didn't sleep last night. I never sleep. Were you up counting sheep or reading I drank, contracts? I drank too much caffeine. You were up texting us. Yes. I was to up be texting on time you. today. Yeah. I like your cup. Thank you. Is this like a security device? Wait, let me it's feel it. Sharp. Pause. Pause. I think it's so it I doesn't. Said pause. That's funny. I think it's so that oh, it doesn't slip. slip out of my hand in case it sweats or something. That really hurts. Runs a bond, pause. You could awesomely, you know, definitely Walmart. Whack them with that thing. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, that grip. Thank hurts. you. Brought to you by Walmart today. Interesting. But make sure you shop uh, uh, the Cheat Code podcast to get your coffee mugs yes. and your, your tea mugs. Our coffee mugs are hot. They're beautiful. You know what the good thing about the coffee mug is? That if you're working from home and oh. you're like doing the Zoom stuff, you can actually make a martini, throw a little mixed drink. Not that you're supposed to throw a Bloody Mary in there at 9 in the morning. But if you're working from home, feel free to indulge. Get you a Cheat Code cup and play it off. <laughs> That's the Cheat Code. Yo, yo. Yeah. We're talking yo. about it. You know? Throw some <laughs> wine in there or whatever. Hey, thanks to you, I know what, what is it? Cheeky? Cheeky? Yeah, the Chica. coffee. Ah, uh, chicory. 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 You said cheeky. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself. Chicory. I know I what know that is now. Yes. You know what it is now? Very I'm nice. old, so you. chicory used to be popular. Yeah. Like my parents drank chicory. Like where do you get chicory from? I drank chicory the when I was in the store? penitentiary. Yeah. Oh, so they have the chicory. And, um, yeah, in no, the coffee aisle. That's because it's the yeah. cheapest. So yeah, you can get it from the grocery store till to this day. I didn't realize it was cheaper. Oh, my parents were cheap. That's what it is. Well, I didn't realize it was cheaper version of coffee. Yeah, it's like, it's... What they're giving you in prison, so it's, it's not like cheaper. yeah, it's not yeah. like Maxwell House or Folgers or anything like that. Mm. It's it's listen, bro. There's no Starbucks in prison. No, there's That's no Starbucks up. in prison. I'll tell you one yeah. thing too. The thing with chicory is that it'll stain. Really? Like if you were to drop chicory on a wooden table, you just got you a dark wooden table. <laughs> that chicory wow. is gonna it will stain. stay right in there. And listen, bro. And if y'all don't know, here's another uh, gem. We can put it at the bottom here. Toothpaste is an adhesive. We learned that in prison too. Toothpaste will stick anything. Envelopes, fix your shoes. It's also a great cleaner. So for you guys that have uh, sneakers, yeah, you know what I mean, well at least you know Chuck Taylors and stuff. You make sure you clean for visitation. Toothpaste. There you go. Get pictures, stick them to the wall. Toothpaste. I use toothpaste when I have holes in the wall and I'm about to move. I plug the little holes, the nail holes, with toothpaste. That's I awesome. use toothpaste yeah. to brush plastic. my teeth. I love it. What a concept! People I didn't were know getting you could toothpaste, toothpaste and putting to clean them on their pimples teeth? when I was in prison. Yeah. Oh they yeah, dry no, out. I definitely, definitely yeah. do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Crazy. All right. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Are you guys ready? I always learn here. Born ready. Come on with it. How we start? Are we starting off with the first Wendy or said? Okay. First Wendy said, "Today's the perfect day to get on her nerves." Yeah, so I'm cranky. Get on her so nerves with. Um, oh, so you're gonna poke the bear? Oh, we're gonna go. Let's viral talk about today. professionalism as a rapper. <laughs> professionalism, professionalism, an oxymoron. Professionalism as an artist, like professional intelligence. Professionalism, being professional, you know, it's so important. Like the the artist can't be disliked. They can never be the bad guy. So. Even if you're a manager or you're a label, you've got to be the bad guy. The artist has to always be cute and fuzzy and sweet and everybody likes them because if you want people to help you and do things for you, you have to be likable. Nobody wants to help somebody that's a dick or an asshole or yeah. mean. Yeah, I definitely. Um, I will say this much. A professional rapper is, in my opinion, somebody that sees beyond the song. Like you have so many artists that are caught up in wanting to be an artist and being eclectic and they think that's the way to represent artistry. And then you have mm. the people that see the vision like, you know what? Like a Lil Baby, for example. I think for the last maybe two or three years, all you, every interview you've ever heard of Lil Baby is a boss mentality where I'm trying to do this and I'm always trying to advance this and I'm trying to make better business moves. So a lot of the decisions that he makes now that we may not know are ultimately being made in preparation for some of those things that he's ultimately bringing to light and some of those investment opportunities or some of the different things. So, you know, a professional artist, in my opinion, is somebody that sees past the tree and sees the forest behind it and understands that everything that they do today is building something for tomorrow. So it's just it's more than just being a creative because you have those artists it's that wake up and brand. create songs and paint and stuff, and they have to have a handler. Somebody has to wake them up and don't take no drugs today and let's go get on stage and all that stuff. And those guys last until the drugs last. Once the drugs last and they, they, they become sober, now they want to start asking questions and they start acting different and they start doing different things so you can't get all the same results out of them. 
And then you got those guys that wake up and understand that this is a business first. And that and, they're a brand. And, and that they're a brand. And those are the guys that, because a professional artist, like said, like a jumbo shrimp, like what, what the fuck is that? A professional rapper? When you, the minute you get paid, you're no longer in the, in, in the amateurs. The minute you're getting booked, the minute you're getting your publishing check, the minute you're getting that stuff, you're no longer a, a rookie doing this. I just, uh, I love when artists respect time. Showing up on time. Yeah. Show up to the meetings on time. Radio interviews. Whatever don't show up is. 30 minutes late. I mean, don't it's show up with an entourage. Don't though, yeah. show up smelling like weed. Don't smell like cigarettes. Don't have to stop yeah. in an interview to go smoke something. Don't be drunk. Don't be high. Truth be told, an artist only works about, if you put it all together, maybe about 30 minutes a day. When they're on tour, an artist, a, a, a little baby may, may work an hour a night when he's on tour. The hour that he's on stage. The rest of that stuff is preparation for the next day, handling regular business and things of that nature. But turning on and having to perform like a football player, you have to work and prepare, but you only work 45 minutes a week. And a lot of these artists don't understand how important that executing to the best of your ability within that time frame is, whether it's an interview or a podcast or recording or doing drops or whatever it is. Punctuality is definitely important. And you're talking to somebody that's always late. So, yeah, I definitely respect you on that one, my brother. I hate walking into places late, and I'm always fucking late for some odd reason, it seems like. But radio interviews, the worst. Don't get to a radio interview late, especially if you're... And don't roll deep to radio ever, ever, ever. Nine times out of ten, when you go to, like, a rhythmic radio station, or even now, post-COVID era, a lot of radio stations aren't letting people get all inside. No more than three. Yeah, so, you know, you, it may be you, the cameraman, and your manager, or you, the cameraman and security, if, you know, your mm -hmm. artist isn't going to go anywhere, or the cameraman is the manager in some cases, but skeleton crew is always recommended. Always. Yeah. Less is more. Whenever you're going anywhere, whenever you're doing radio interviews, you're going into the studio, less is more. If you're not, if the six people in the studio don't have, if four of them, one of them has to be the engineer. One of them, you know, the producer may be in there as well. If the producer isn't the engineer and the artist, that's three. So if there's three other people in there, one of them needs to have a camera and the other one needs to have the camera phones out. Everybody needs to be documenting and sharing and capturing moments and taking pictures because it's not about you being with the artist. It's about helping this person remain a star. What do you guys think about athletes do that do music? Damian Lillard, um, Antonio Brown. Shaq. Shaq. Adam Deion Iverson, Sanders. Deion Sanders. When you say do music, are you saying rapping or build record labels? I would say the ones that do the actual music, that perform the music. Doing Antonio the videos, Brown. Antonio Brown. Like for example, he's our most recent one. Uh, he performed at Rolling Loud. Um, he had a great set got, at Rolling Loud. Yeah. What do you guys? He had a. He actually had a very warm response. I think that if they're talented, it's awesome. I think if they're not so talented and they're using their fame to start a second career, it's not so awesome. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I would disagree. I would. I would definitely agree. The problem is with most of these artists that they can't use that fame to translate. A football player becoming a successful rapper is not going to become a successful rapper because he was a football player. Correct. Have you noticed that it's a little harder for a football player to do music than a basketball player? Only, And I know why, because basketball, oh. you can see their faces. It's a lot more branding. Football players, unless it's about that. the most popular person, like can Tom Brady's not putting you? out a song. I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it has to do with the hundred, hundreds of millions of dollars that corporations pump into football teams. I think some of these athletes have contracts where they're required to watch a certain amount of uh, game film per week. Mm. Um, some of these guys, uh, their contracts and their brands, Colgate, Coors Light, Miller Time, they don't want you up there talking about not. who you're going to fuck, kill, rob, shoot, what kind of drugs you're going to take. <clears throat> so a lot of the time, the art that these guys want to create may be frowned upon by the organizations. I mean... <clears throat> I've never been to the Brooklyn Nets arena in New York City. I have. It's nice. Have you ever been inside of it? Yeah. Are there are there a ton of title advertisements inside of there? Last time I was there, I can't remember seeing it. Are there a ton of Jay-Z advertisements in there? Do you have the Jay-Z no. columns and the pictures and the no. QR no. codes? No. He owns the fucking team. So, you know, in in in, in the perfect world, you would think that a person like a, a Bob Kraft or people that own these stadiums would be able to put what they want in there, but those stadiums were licensed. There's a company, Heinz Ketchup, 
is got their name on the outside of this. So what goes on inside of this represents the outside as well. So it it all comes back to the money, man. And and most people, when you look at a professional athlete, professional athletes are held to a higher standard than a regular civilian. Correct. Because of the money that they generate and the money that they're responsible for generating for their particular teams or mm. brands or corporations. So, yeah, I'm sure it has to do with, you know, facing and recognition, but... You know, uh, who was the, the rapper? Tech Nine wore a mask his whole career. Uh, yes. There are people that have gotten away with it. One of Kodak Black's most famous interviews was him wearing a ski mask at the Breakfast Club. Yeah. You know, facial recognition and branding is important mm -hmm. because the eyes sell more than the ears. But when it, in, in relation to athletes, I think it has more to do with the corporations that they're in bed with and involved with that limit their ability to put out the yes. art that they want to yes. more so than anything else. And their, and their handlers... We just took on a client who is in the NFL. He's not he's not rapping though, he's building a label. And his agent or manager made me jump through hoops that I would have never jumped through for like an the average person. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to tell the player no. I don't well, he did tell him no, I don't want you to do this, but he didn't want to cock block him. Mm -hmm. So what he did was he made it almost contractually impossible for me to do this. And it's funny because I pointed it out to him and I'm like, you know, after we agreed and I signed the contract to move on, I'm like, tell your agent, I'm sorry, but we're moving forward. And he laughed. Cause he's like, how did you know he didn't want to do it? Cause it's obvious from the contract. Right. Like he made me jump through hoops that are insane. Right. You know, because at the end of the day, his money the back dinged. end. Right. That back end money, right. man, that contract. The football from, money uh, and just Contract athletic, money, period. Yeah. Yeah. Sports, yeah. Where you're somebody is paying you to represent their team, their brand, and you're representing all of the corporations and that invest so in that And there's so many people in, that, in, the, in, the team, in the player's right. circle right. that get paid. So everybody's worried. It's not just, you know, if you want to start a label, maybe you, your wife, and your kids are directly impacted or affected. Right. But when you're a player, it's like not and only your family, but your agent, your lawyer, your manager. Your salary team, affects 15 your, your, people. Your team players, it's, yeah. like, it's like so many people are affected. Especially if you're a really, really good player and you're one of the captains. You know, I, you know can I, if, I can, if I can throw this in there, I think one of the problems with athletes that own labels or athletes that want to become musicians is the same problem that every independent artist has. Because you have money, you think you can do it. And it doesn't take money. No, it's the time in. Money is, is required to get you long distance. You can walk yes. to the corner store. You're not going to walk to California. Yes. Yes. You right. can. Yes. It's going to take you a while to walk there. Oh, here you go. Okay, so. Keep going. You know, understanding that <laughs> because... Because you have the ability to walk into a room, and, I, and I, you always hear me, we won't, I don't want to badger this person, but if this one particular athlete, boxer, famous, all the money in the world, billionaire, if he wanted to, he could take any independent artist that he signed. This is a fact. He could take any independent artist that he signed. He can sign up and do an amateur boxing match and agree to 10 million, and then take that amateur artist that he signed and put them in every radio station in America right next to him while he goes and talks about his amateur fight. He could demand this. Correct. But it will never happen because the people around him that he's trusted, that he's selected to handle that portion of the industry, don't know what the fuck they're doing. Mm. So when you've got a lawyer, when you've got an artist, when you have an athlete, an entertainer, a booking agent, and all publicists and all of these different people, all of those people are on call. If he gets caught DUI drinking and he punches a cop in the face, all of those people are going to be the first ones to come to his aid and rescue to try to figure it out. Not for his reputation, for the money. For their pockets. For their pockets. Fuck his yes. reputation. Yeah. Yeah. He stops yeah. getting paid. I stop getting, getting paid. paid. I stop getting exactly. paid. Kids can't go to private school. What are you doing? Calm down. Mm. Right. So I think a lot of times that that should be one of the things. And I know with you on the job, this guy's going to be super, super and, and protective. I'm also going absolutely. I'm um, I'm also going to blame the industry. I think, and and not us, because I think we're very authentic, ethical people that do the right thing. But let's be real, we're in an industry of motherfuckers that don't. Right. So when a sports guy comes in, a lot of people look at them as prey. I know so many guys that have lost millions of dollars to people that I respect in this industry because they saw them as a paycheck. And that drives me crazy. And I think that, 
you know, the, the ball players know this. So they're very leery to come in because they don't really know who to trust. I watched Which a ball why, player. Oh, no, go ahead. I watched a ball player come in and spend $250,000 on a party at All Star. And that was what his consultant said was a great move for him. Of course. So everybody knew who he was for three days. For three days, he was the motherfucking man. But they never put out a song. They never put out an artist. And and he lost a quarter million dollars on a party. I blame the industry. Like, as, as an industry, we just don't do what's right. Dev, at, you know, anytime that you involve human, human when, when you can greed, insert... Human uh, greed. <laughs> greed, I mean... American greed. I don't even want to say American. I want to say. I want to say. I want to say human human incompetence. You allowed human incompetence because Mm. it's, and we talked about this on one of our episodes that the people that are learning how to do these things, they're learning from people that have been doing it wrong, Mm. and those people made money doing it wrong. So you can't tell them they weren't doing it right. Right. And that's one of the. Those are two words that I have a me and my business partner. We argue all the time, like kingpin. Stop telling people they're doing it wrong. Stop telling people they're doing it right. You don't know. And he's 100% right. I don't know what right or wrong is because it changes so much in this industry. It does change. But what I do know is you're not doing it to the best of its ability. Ability, right. And that Max is a out. disservice. Don't do it right. Don't Max do it, it out. Max it out. Yeah. Do it to its that. potential. Do I it like to that. the full. You don't know what right Ooh, or wrong is, I smell but go hard. Do it hard. Max it out. Max it out. Yeah, yeah. so. Okay. Maximum potential. All right, question of the day. Dear The Cheat Code Podcast, I'm an independent artist that wants to stay independent, but how do I build a team and a fan base? I don't know anybody. My social skills are zero for 10. Also, what's the best way to fund this venture so I can go pro in general? I work a part-time and full-time job, minimum wage. I work a part, full-time, minimum wage job, so my time is somewhat stuck on that. Should I take a loan out? Thank you guys for answering my question. In order to get a loan, you're going to have to have collateral. So if you're working part full time, I'm not sure what that is, but you know yeah, maybe you got a maybe you got a full time job and a part time gig, or you're working a full time job part time because you can't get that many hours because they're understaffing or whatever it is. So I definitely understand that part there. It's definitely going to take money to get your music to more people. It doesn't take money to get your music played. It takes having a good record to get your music played. Right. It doesn't take money to money pay to a DJ. It. it takes having a relationship with a DJ. It, these are all the different things it takes to get paid. Having money to pay a DJ to play your record that you have no relationship with is like pissing in the wind. Yeah, correct. I think we talked about this the other day. Me and my wife were talking about it. And you people need to stop paying for applause in empty rooms. Thank you. Because what you're doing is you're going out on stage okay. or you're dropping records to nobody, but you're paying for the numbers to convince you and somebody else that may not know any better that that is what it is. And it's Correct. not. And you're doing that because you're afraid to work. You're afraid to fail. You're afraid to test your product. What does it take for you to put music out? I don't know, young bro. What platform are you using? SoundCloud does it as, as simple as $2.50. You can record music and upload it on YouTube. And if you're doing your business right, you can ultimately monetize your YouTube channel and create two revenue streams for yourself. The money that's collected from your distributor and your own money that you make from your partnership with YouTube. Are you being, are, are, you don't have any social skills? You're in a social business. You have to be able to sell it. How do you find team members? What do you want to accomplish? You're going to have a hard time finding people that you don't know what you want them to do. Hey, man, I just need your help. Okay, well, I'm a gardener. Yeah, I just need your help, though. What you need my help with? I don't do graphic designs. I don't do videos. What, what, what can I do for you? So, you know, those are all open-ended questions. So I would suggest the answer to all of those questions are in the first 18 episodes of The Cheat Code. Exactly. Agreed. I'm going to be harsher than you, and I'm going to say, no, you should never take out a loan to do this. The risk is too high. Are you fucking nuts? You got to pay a loan back. You're going to lose your house or your car or whatever. You're going to lose everything if you take out a loan to do this, especially if you don't know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this 30 years and I wouldn't take out a loan to do this. Are you nuts? You'll never you'll never be able to pay it back. You're Dear always, God. You're, you're always going to gonna be at a disadvantage. When man. you take a loan now, you got to probably pay it right back. Yes. Like you got to start paying it back. Like, like immediately. In, immediately. There, that's the thing with major deals. Everybody's not understanding that when you get a major deal and these people give you two or three million dollars, you're paying that back. Agreed. (laughs) 
you're paying that back at a handsome rate. And you're paying it back out rate. of your share. You're not paying it back off the top. And then you start getting paid. If you've got a 12 point deal or an 18 point deal, you're paying that million or 2 million back out, out of, of the your 12 points. or 18%. Correct. I don't know any artist that's ever recouped. Not one. I don't know one. And then, you know, you had Sony and all these guys like, hey, you know what? If, if you still owe us money from the 80s, bitch, don't worry about it. Y'all, it took y'all 40 years to do that? Yeah. For it real. took y'all 40 years. Like, if you For still real. owe us some money, bro, go on, wipe it off the For board, real. bro. Go on and get your little $800 check. Nobody's listening to your shit anyways because somebody else owns the publishing on it and all the other shit. So go ahead and get your little $800 check that's coming to you next it's year from publishing. It's an empty gesture. Yeah, it's really. But it was done at a time. Like, now you have uh, Facebook is, is now doing revenue shares with artists with, off, off ad pays, forcing TikTok's hands. So it's a lot of stuff going on with these socials now. And as an artist that's working part-time, full-time, let me say this. If, you've, if you're monetizing your platforms, we just know an artist, and I'll say his name because fuck it, why not? Little Donald just got invited to be a part of the Meta Creator Program where he can cap out at $30,000 a month. Beautiful. Based off of comments and likes on his posts. That's insanity. That's awesome. So as an artist, that's what you should be going for. You should be trying to monetize all of your platforms so that all of the different ways you can make money, you're now involved in all of those ways. You're putting yes. out a record. Cool. Are we talking about the record? Are you monetizing the platform where you talk about your record? No? Then we need to start figuring that out. Are you recording videos? Are you going live? Are you utilizing Twitter spaces? Are you taking advantage anywhere that there's a large collection of people? Are you taking advantage and trying to get to into those groups and get into those people and pause and speak and, and share your content and share your videos and try to figure out what it is that you're doing right or wrong? Um, follow your dreams or you're going to work for somebody who followed theirs. Amen. Ooh. Yeah. You need to say, look at me. I'm dope. The music needs to match that. Cheat code. Cheat code. 